Hello, grammarians. I wanted to talk to you again about mutant plurals. So to review, a mutant plural is there are only seven of them in English, and they all change sound when they pluralize. You don't add an S. You don't add an E-N. You don't change the ending. You change the vowel. And there are only seven. They go like this. There's man, woman, tooth, foot, mouse, louse, and goose. And these words become, in the plural, men, women, teeth, feet, mice, lice, and geese. Now, the, the reason that we have these seven weird mutant plurals in English is kind of complicated, but I'm lucky enough to be able to work with an actual linguist. Hello, Jake. Hey, grammarians. Jake, is it true that you are a linguist? Yep, it's true. All right, so Jake, what is the deal with feet? Where, where do these mutant plurals come from? If we take the word foot and we drag it through history, how do we get, how do we get to the plural as feet? What's the deal with that? So if you look at a lot of Germanic languages that are around today, you find similar words to the word, the English word foot. In German, we have the word fuss. In Dutch, we have the word foot. And when you have a lot of different languages with slight variations of a word, it means there's some old, old word out there that all these words are coming from. So we can pretty much be sure that there's some proto-Germanic word that sounds something like foot. Now, back in those days, there was a different way to form the plural, and that was to add a, an E sound at the end of a word. So if the word was foot, then the plural was maybe footy. That means many foots. Now, there's a, a tendency in language that you have to understand here. It's called vowel harmony. Basically means that vowels within a given word, they like to sound like each other. So if you have two syllables, those syllables will start to con the vowels in those syllables will start to converge. Um, and in Germanic languages especially, there's, there's one typical kind of vowel harmony, which okay. is that you have two two vowels in a word, the first vowel will, will try to sound more like the second vowel if that second vowel is the E sound, just like in the plural formation of nouns. So you're saying that the, the suffix E at the end of this, this proposed word futi, mm -hmm. the U sound tried to sound more like the E sound. This is right. just a pattern that we found in Germanic languages. Exactly. It's very prevalent in Germanic languages. Also exists in some Romance languages, some tiny Romance languages. So, so what happens when you combine the U sound with the E sound? What sound do you get? Well, strangely, you get the E sound. Are you, sound what, which, is, what is that? The E sound. Are you Half okay? The, I think I'm okay. You know, we linguists have to deal with this kind of thing all the time. <laughs> Sorry. We have very strong stomachs. Mm -hmm. You still get this sound in, in languages like German and Dutch. So then that, that's what this E is, right? So, so this sound, or, or I guess the, so the plural of German, fuss, is what? You said fusse? So, okay, so, so bring this home for me. So at some point in the development of English, or of all these Germanic languages, we had the foot, we had this word foot, and then it turned into footy, and then it turned into what? And turned into footy? Something like footy, right. Okay. Now, eventually that e sound dropped out of English, which is why it's so hard for us to pronounce. And it was replaced in pretty much all cases with the e sound. Mm -hmm. So we get the word fiti, and then the e drops off. And we're left with foot as the singular and feet as the plural. Cool. So it goes from foot to fiti. Now, the, the same exact thing happened with the word mouse, which probably used to be moose. Because in Frisian, which is the closest cousin to English, the word for mouse still is moose. Moose? And you find similar things in a lot of Germanic languages, like maus in Dutch and maus in German. The plural 
became Musi, and then eventually Misi, and then you get Mies. Then during a few hundred years later, during the Great Vowel Shift, that Mies becomes Mice. A lot of E vowels in the Great Vowel Shift about mm-hmm. 500 years ago became I vowels. So this is, this is sort of the broad pattern these, these mutant words all take, is this umlaut mutation, right? Because mm-hmm. this, this, this little, these double dots that go over a, uh, well, it looks like a little smiley face. Uh, that go over a vowel, change its color, right? Mm-hmm. That change its meaning. And that that process is called either um, umlaut mutation or I mutation. Not I like the sight organ, I like the letter in English. Cool. Well, I hope that cleared some things up for you. You can learn anything. David out. Jake out. That was a high five, not a slap.